not that much different about throwing something large. It's a little bit harder for me with the boot on, but I always just immediately seal my clay down and then start the centering process. You know, it's always, I think, most important to focus on that first inch and a half or so. This stuff was going to be pretty easy to center up here, but down there it's kind of harder. It's connected to the wheel. So pushing back down after I've kind of focused down here, now I can pay attention up here and uh, kind of push the clay down really paying attention to the, that as I push the clay down, I'm not letting my clay get uneven because it's taking a lot of pressure. I'm still making sure my arms and hands are very stable. And that's sort of the first time, I think it's almost centered, it's like 90 or 95% there, but I'll just do that again to make sure. to think about my base diameter and what I'm going to throw. And most vase forms, I do feel like if they get too wide at the very base, they're going to start looking really dumpy, really squat. And so for a slightly more elegant shape, I want to make sure that you know, the diameter is on this. Might see, feel like it's a little bit on the skinny side, but I think that will help me in the long run. opening up that, the vase and uh, I'm not leaving a lot of extra clay so it's just gonna it's not really gonna have much of a trimmed foot it'll be pretty much flat which will be to my advantage because I'm gonna want to make this something tall enough and skinny at the top it's gonna be very hard to trim So this is not a ton of clay. This is probably barely three pounds, not even quite. It might be two and three quarters. So up here, it's really easy to get the clay pretty thin. It's down here that it's hard. Hey, notice how my elbows are really close to my body when I'm doing this to help keep my hands very stable. chunk of clay in there. Oh, must have fallen off my hand at some point. So now, now I've got my walls basically as thin as I think I could, should get them for this height. Um, so now I need to think about shape. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm just going to throw this as one intact piece, not to attach parts. And then I'll do some other pieces that I will throw today, but then they won't get attached till probably on Wednesday. And so that's something you'll probably want to look up on the uh, video once it gets uploaded. I'll let you know. So this one I'm thinking about uh, your traditional Chinese kind of form and like how I might want to go about throwing that. I just colored my clay in, which I always think of as being kind of a not great thing to do because you're putting pressure on one side. So if there's any unevenness, it's going to show up. So whenever I do color in, I always counterbalance that with some stabilizing motions, actions that are on the inside and the outside of the clay. So collar, 
stabilize. Is there Not really, no, just stabilize, holding my hands really stable to make sure it's even. And then kind of looking down here, I'm thinking about now the, the final shape really, like how, how do I want that curve to transition into a neck? Stabilize. Now I threw this on a bat. And if I really want to refine this and get, make this really tall and elegant, but have this be very bulbous, I probably need to actually stop very soon and let it set up. Or it's on a bat, so I could take the back off and like let it dry or use a heat gun. I'm not going to do that right now, so my piece won't, maybe it, well, the neck won't be quite as long and elegant be, and just because I'm doing it all at once. without giving it a chance to set up at all. This is not my nature. I'm usually the one to take this off the wheel and let it set up and then come back and fuss with it some more. But right now, this is all I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of my throwing lines mostly because I'm thinking about Kelly and how she wants to decorate on hers. And so, you know, they, you probably want it to be pretty smooth. Now with a neck like this, trimming can be a little ch challenging. So I remember I didn't leave a lot of extra clay at the base. So I may not do, I may not even try to uh, trim this piece upside down at all. It would be pretty hard we do have chucks that you can rest it in, but generally I'm hoping that I can just leave this on the bat and then come back while it, just before it's leather hard when it's still stuck to the bat and just do a little trimming on the outside. And, and when I look at the, at the very base, I may just take, you know, sponge it off and sign my name. Um, yeah, so, I, so right now I'm not gonna run a wire underneath there because I kind of want it to stay so I can go back and play around with the surface when it's leather hard, but not right now when it's really soft. Um, okay.